Hi, this is Coast Connections, and I'm Brian Anderson, and my guest today, we're going to talk about a new uh, facility for Nanaimo, the Ocean Discovery Centre. With me today, Lauren Hildebrand and Tim Tessier. Hi, Brian. So welcome. Thank you for having us. Thanks. So what about this Ocean Discovery Centre? Well, <clears throat> I, I'm a scuba diver, and I've been in Nanaimo for a number of years, and I've got to tell you something. I have the wonderful experience of being able to go down under our water and see what's down there. And what I've learned about Nanaimo and our, and our environment is that the ocean is such, such an important part of it. And the diving here is spectacular. I mean, our, our these, those wrecks that we sunk are covered in anemones. The life is beautiful. We have people coming from all over the world to dive some of those things. Might be, it might be some of the best diving in the world. And so when I was originally approached about this project, I see it as a logical extension of that. Our oceans are so important to us, and what we really need to do is create an awareness of keeping them environmentally healthy, the kinds of, of, of uh, tourism dollars that can be generated by this. And, and it's kind of funny because so many people in Nanaimo aren't as connected to the oceans as they should be. I'm really lucky. I do boating, I dive, all of those things. And so for me, this is really a way to take something that is so important to us and just highlight it and make some kind of world-class center that everybody could appreciate it. Now, Tim, yes. before when we were talking, you mentioned mm -hmm. that this is a, would have some economic benefits for Nanaimo. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I will. Thank you. You know, I was involved. I'm not a diver. I've never been under the ocean surface, you know, uh, short of one, one time in Hawaii, uh, but I have the utmost respect for it, and I recognize what we're, what we're doing with it and not doing with it. As far as the economic impact, a couple of years ago I had the opportunity to interview many people in Nanaimo, and the message was clear. We needed something. We needed that identity. We needed something to bring and keep people here. Um, studies have shown a facility like ours could quadruple, triple, ten times the, num the number of cruise ships that come into our community. Um, studies show that every cruise, ships, cruise ship that comes in delivers $250,000 into that downtown core. That's a lot of money for our, for our area. So how quickly is this going to happen? Is this like next year? Or is well, we're, we're pretty early in the process. I, we've been working at it for about a year. By the way, it's this all-volunteer committee, and so we, right. we've been putting tremendous amounts of time in. And uh, we're getting much, much closer. We started off probably about eight months ago, and, and we developed a, an association, a legal entity. So we have the Nanaimo Deep Discovery Association. That's our legal entity. And so from there, we created a, a board of directors, and we brought all these volunteers in. And then we actually contracted with a local architect in town to start developing some plans of what this thing might look like. And so, I think there's some con conceptual plans yeah, we'd love that people we've got that our audience can have a look at. And please, and, and we'd love for people to look at it because one of the things that we really want to see out of this is we want to create this amazing experience with all kinds of uh, really interesting interactive things going on inside this building. But part of it is to create some kind of iconic display or iconic building for Nanaimo. I mean, we think of Science World, and all you have to do is show a picture of Science World yes. to people. And you know, they immediately know what it is, they know what it does, and, it's, and, and the planetarium was very similar to that in Vancouver. And if you, if you showed a picture of Vancouver back in the, in the 80s, the planetarium was on all of those things. That's how you identified that city, was by that planetarium at the time. And what we really want to do is create this wonderful, iconic building that people around the world look at it and say, I know that place. That's that very cool, unique place that talks about the ocean and technology. It has all these amazing attractions and rides in it. And that's in Nanaimo. That's where we want to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, Campbell River has an aquarium, but it's very uh, limited, let's say. But again, we don't have anything like that. And, and Brian, this is, we get to ask that often. Um, this is not an aquarium. This is certainly not a museum. What this is is going to be an interactive experience where people can understand more about the ocean, uh, the education, the environment, the ecology, but as important, if not most important. Where this started was, is central Vancouver Island, our region, is, is the hub for some of the most amazing world-class undersea technology. Uh, 
And that's what we're going to bring into Nanaimo. Um, we have access to a, a world-renowned um, uh, inventory of, of deep sea technologies that we'll be putting on display. There will be interactive experiences, an IMAX theater and so forth. So you can actually experience the dive without ever getting wet. So could I try on a newt suit? Well, you might have a newt suit there you can try, but let me paint a picture of one of the things we're thinking about. Is Has anyone ever been to the Soaring Over California and Disneyland? Have you done that ride? I haven't, but I've talked so, to somebody about it. So that's those are the kinds of things that we want to do. I mean, imagine walking down this hallway that, you know, covered in... Uh, displays of uh, undersea technology and all those things and walking and sitting in a theater and then the theater when the show starts picks you up off the ground and then you sail down through the ocean maybe down into the Marianas Trench and on the way down you bump into Phil Newton in a newt suit and you kind of get jiggled around and you go down and you look at the vents and we start talking about what the ocean is going to provide in the future and the kinds of technology that are going to come out of those vents and then you sail up and maybe you sail up and go past the big plastic garbage dump that's in the ocean and, and, and you have this wonderful thrilling experience but you walk out going wow I didn't know that was like that I didn't know that garbage thing was so you know so serious what, what do we do about that or another idea we've had is you can actually put people down into the Saskatchewan that that boat that we sunk just out 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 in front of Nanaimo and there will be a real-time uh, ROV, a remotely operated vehicle, with 360-degree high-definition cameras. And there'll be 30 of you sitting in a room, and it's actually being flown by a pilot. And you can all sit there, and all around you, it's like you're actually on the wreck. And you can even say, hey, I, I haven't been through the engine room. Can you fly the thing through the engine room? Sure enough, the, the pilot will take you down through the engine room. But you can see the life. You can see what's going on down there. You can get that experience. And what we're hoping is you walk away going, that was really cool. I'm going to bring my family to it. But what I also recognize is I don't want to have this thing turn out like the Red Sea, which is dying and dead. So we think that it can be both educational, mm -hmm. environmental, but it's going to be fun. And it's, it's going to be unique, too. But very interesting, like the Vancouver Aquarium, because, I mean, when I was in Vancouver, we had a family membership because it's just a great place to go. Absolutely. Now, we, don't, we, we might have a touch tank, but we're not going to keep things in captivity. We're really clear about that. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that, not the least of which it's tremendously expensive to look after and take care of. And so, um, we'll, and plus, which is all those issues about keeping things in captivity. So, we, we, a, a short of a, a touch tank, there really won't be an aquarium, but we promise the experience will be, and I hate to use the word Disneylandish because people kind of do that, but we want to have that kind of world-class, unique experience that makes you say, that was so cool, i got to come back. And actually, that's what I was getting at. It was the comeback aspect yes. as yeah. opposed yeah. to uh, having something that Vancouver has. This would be totally different. Yeah, maybe as opposed to a simple museum. I mean, you can go through it once. I, I get that. That's a lot of fun. Do you want to go through it twice? Um, probably not. <laughs> well, we'll get phone calls from uh, Debbie Truman because our museum actually they do change things and and and, and that's absolutely great. and and i i think that's wonderful and i and there will certainly be displays on ours and i i hope that we'll get to work a little bit at the museum too so we're really supportive of those folks as well so you're looking at being very collaborative with other societies and entities in town absolutely we've met with a lot of various stakeholders um, vancouver island university we've had meetings there uh, we've done presentations with the Chamber of Commerce and from that a number of uh, interested parties have come out. We're also looking at partner, partnering with other facilities around the world. Um, there are very few facilities that really focus on the technologies and the experience. It's not going to be a static display that you will just go to and, and read a virtual or, or follow uh, an interactive story. This is where you want to go in and experience what's underneath the oceans. So by all means, we, we're going to be partnering with other facilities and other organizations. So maybe one thing we could deal with is maybe the elephant in the room because mm -hmm. You know, a lot of viewers say, okay, fine, what's, what's the cost and who's going to pay for it? So, You know, the, co the cost is quite high, and quite frankly, mm -hmm. we're guessing this is going to be in the range of about $50 million if we want to build it the way we would like to see it built. And, and clearly, the, the, the committee's focus and the group that's behind this is, how do we create a world-class facility? And so we can't skim. This isn't going to be done on the fly. This has to be done uh, properly. 
But I think when we talk about that, what we need to recognize is, is that we want to approach um, government levels and, and not municipal. We want to be very clear about that. We want to approach the federal and provincial governments to say, you know what, we all pay an awful lot of tax. And that tax goes off and does all kinds of wonderful projects. Can we have some of that back here? And we think it's an investment because we're going to see tourism, not just the, the, the cruise ships. We think that Vancouver's a market. You put a fast ferry in, people want to come to this thing. There's the Seattle market, the whole Pacific Northwest. And quite frankly, this is unique enough that this is a Canadian and U.S. market. What this could do for us at virtually no cost to the city at all is going to bring in all this excess money. You know what? We pay our taxes anyway. Let's get some of it back here and put it to use for us and create something in our community that we can really be proud of. We want to be known as a place that has this amazing, unique facility. And it's in Nanaimo and nowhere else. And a Vancouver Island facility because, I mean, Butchered Gardens, I mean, it's been there for years. It's got a world-renowned reputation Absolutely. and draws hundreds of thousands of I, people. I go there three times a year. We, really, it's, it's yeah. an amazing thing. And it, it, part of it is because, too, it's near the ocean. It's connected and has all of that stuff. Their marketing is great. We can do that here. We can do, we can do that here. And with all due respect to Bouchard Gardens, we can do something even more amazing in, in a different vein, right? More amazing. This, this is going to be the only place like it in the world. So I know that you've got some concept drawings, but do you have a spot in mind or have you got like a shopping we do. list? We do. Um, we've identified a few uh, locations here in Nanaimo. We want to maintain it in Nanaimo. There's been groups from outside of the city that have approached us and expressed interest, but this is for the city of Nanaimo. Um, they, they're all on the waterfront. Some of it is private land, some of it is municipal land, some of it may be federal. We haven't secured one yet. Okay. So if there was a contribution that the city could put into this, it would certainly be uh, maybe a piece of waterfront land that they might be able to schedule and say that that's something else could be used for. it. And our kind of point around that is that something like this is going to attract a tremendous amount of interest around it. I mean, you can imagine, if you see the pictures, you can imagine around there a, a garden area, a park area, a walkway, restaurants, yeah. um, shopping. I mean, you can create a village around this thing that would just be the most attractive thing. And so we really see this project as not just one that creates this absolutely unique and amazing center. We see this as something that's going to bring a whole bunch of new development in. This would become a, an area, not just our center. We don't actually take up a lot of space, and I, Tim knows the exact space. We're not a huge space, but we think what could be built around us, and, and we could be a real trigger point for turning you know, an area into an amazing, uh, amazing tourist and, and destination for everybody. Well, and Tim, you mentioned cruise ship centers. Yes. Um, We've got a cruise ship facility somewhere in that neighborhood would seem like a somewhat logical choice. And maybe we could get more cruise ships visiting. Well, that's, that's a big part of it. We have one of the most phenomenal waterfront promenade walkways in all of Canada, if not yeah. North America, for a small city of Nanaimo. Now imagine, and that's what got me excited about the Ocean Discovery Center. I started to refer to it as the village because this will become a destination without a doubt. Uh, we've done some research on the number of the cruise ships and what they're looking for is destination tourism, a place where they can bring your people. Now, what's happening now is a number of people are coming off that cruise ship, getting on buses and going to Victoria or going up island. Um, they send people up, you know, I ask people along the way, have you ever gone up to Coombs Village? Virtually everyone has and virtually everyone has taken their guests to Coombs Village to see the goats on the roof in the market, which is a wonderful experience. Now imagine this on our waterfront, where you could walk along Mafio Sutton Park on a nice Sunday, yeah. Saturday afternoon, and it encompasses, it, it brings the, almost the, call it the bookend to the promenade. Um, I had a conversation, when we talk tourism and economic dollars, if we brought 20 more cruise ships into our community, there's that impact, that's the big number. But in speaking with someone who rents a room on Airbnb and people come from all over the world to stay in her home, they ask her, what can we do here in Nanaimo? Yeah. 
And she said she's constantly challenged because people aren't simply, you know, yes, the topography, the geography, they're looking for that beauty, but they're, they're also looking for engagement. Yeah. And she said, you know, Tim, if you brought something like that here, it would mean two nights instead of one. Yeah. I would double my occupancy. And that's the thing, I think, with the hotels and the hotel surveys, uh, we have enough uh, stays, but it's just trying to maximize that, to have everybody add on one more day. One I more mean, day, one more dinner, one more breakfast, stopping yeah. in a shop to buy a book downtown. Uh, yeah. it, it, you know, the reciprocal impact on our economy is phenomenal. Plus, if, if we become more that place to go to, we'll become that place to move to with the passenger yeah. ferry, and we're going through that growth. Nanaimo in the next several years will get over 100,000 people. So we're gonna have that critical mass. We need facilities like this. Do you know, I, I had a call, we, we've had a website up for a while, and, and uh, we've had lots of people look at it, and if I can say this, if you like the project, go on our web website. It's ndda.ca. There's a place where you can like the thing and send us an email of support. And we've gotten hundreds. We have like thousands because we think we're going to be able to go to governments and say this is why it's worth investing this. But I had a guy call me up from Vancouver and he said, you know what, I run a, 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 a tour company. And he said, if you put something like this up, I'd bring tours over. Like, when, when is it going to start? What's it, what's it, when are you going to do it? So I think that the, the uh, amount of economic revenue is... It, it, it's going to generate a tremendous amount. And then the bonus is we teach people about the ocean, how important it is yes. to look after it. So you get this wonderful environmental, you know, ecological thing all tied up with it. And I, I want people to walk away from there and kids coming through classes to walk over there and go, oh, so I guess we really do have to take care of our ocean right out in front because we could lose it. Well, for Tim and I, uh, and I'll leave you out of this one, Lauren, we're probably past because we haven't been divers. And I haven't been, so no. the two of us, it's probably we're at an age where that might be a challenge to take on. And I know that's not necessarily the case, but to be able to go to something like this and have the, that kind of experience would be fantastic. Indeed, indeed. Uh, spending the afternoon, uh, bringing guests to it. To, yeah, and as you said earlier, Brian, it'll be a, a destination. It'll go back and it'll be a do-over. It's not a one-time visit. You know, the pictures are coming up on the screen. And again, imagine that on the waterfront. The lower level of this facility is where the exhibits will be. And you will actually submerge or go down below what is, it feels like the surface. Because our design and our architects have designed where that lower level will be encased with a, um, a water element so that you will actually feel as if you're underneath the Earth's surface. The open concourse area where you see all of the glass in the pictures, that's to take the shape and a form of a jellyfish. And then the various displays. Um, there's a large uh, component of First Nations and Aboriginal technology and how they used the oceans to sustain and survive on this very land where we live today. With some quite amazing technology yeah. for the day, like they were able to harvest things 30, 40, 50 feet down using some pretty ingenious methods. And that's the whole point is, is that man interacts with the ocean and interacts mm -hmm. through the technology of it. And in the future, everybody needs to take some responsibility on what that technology looks like and how it works and what's, what's the effect on the ocean. What about technology that helps save the ocean now as opposed to, you know, always using stuff from it? So. And by the way, I got to laugh. I got a friend who's diving and he's 73 and he's on our yeah. committee. So just, you're not done yet. You no. just might be able to get and do right. some diving. <laughs> okay, well, we might hold you to that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but I, I want to make sure it's a two way trip. You know, yeah, you don't oh, want yeah, this, absolutely. You don't want the cement um, shoes. No, no, that's, that's not what you want to do. <laughs> okay. So, you, and you mentioned earlier that you have, like, it's a volunteer organization, and you have quite a broad base of people that are on the board. We do. We, we have folks um, like Terry Knight, who was involved in the starting of some of the ROV um, uh, industry here. We have uh, folks from, like Garth Bush, who was a, 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 an accountant with Myers Dorse Penny, and so he's bringing that expertise to us. Um, Mike Harold is an engineer. I don't want to go through, I'm, I'll miss somebody I know, but we have I, I, the, the committee that we have now is made up of very reasonable people that have experience in business or, or working for their communities or doing something. And what I like about our group is it's a, it's a realistic group. 
I'm a businessman, I've been in Nanaimo for 25 years. I'm not interested in putting up a project that's gonna cost everybody a whole bunch of money because it's gonna be a drain. That, that's not who I am, that's not yeah. what my business career has been. It's about being th things that are successful and are, and are helpful. And I know Tim feels, I know everyone in our committee feels that way. And so what we want to do is create something that sure is going to take some, some tax money out of maybe from some other community or other project somewhere and bring it here in Nanaimo, but it's not going to be an ongoing drain. It's going to be something that's positive and create a positive cash flow for the center itself and then for the community, plus the environmental stuff. And so I, I love the fact that we have that really sort of uh, sober kind of, of, of folks on our committee um, Rebecca, who's done lots of, Rebecca Kirk has done lots of wonderful things. These are people that understand, you know, how, how businesses work and how organizations work and you can't spend more than you make because that causes a problem. Exactly. So I love the fact that we have these folks on our, on our committee that, are, that understand those principles. And I think that's, that's been the basis for us being able to move forward. Well, one of the first things we also did, Brian, was, um, and we see it too often in small communities, a facility is built and then that organization keeps coming back to the well for grants and funds and whatnot. Yeah. We've done those studies. We had a feasibility study done for this project and it's going to be self-sustaining. It will okay. pay for itself, plus it, create the jobs about, around it. I think that's a key issue because mm -hmm. I think one of the concerns that the voters had with the mm -hmm. event center was a sort of a lot of questions about operations, about the initial cash outlay, and mm -hmm. so you've actually gone through and worked through the numbers. Yeah, and we've done those, those studies, and we've had conversations both at the federal and provincial level. Uh, they're waiting for certain elements of our business plan, which will be complete in the next actually a few days, um, but yes, we've done the studies to show that it will sustain itself. No, no, we do have to be clear though, because I want to say this, I, I have a couple of people have phoned us up and said, well, if this is such a wonderful project, why don't you just get a business to come in here and build mm -hmm. it and do it? And, and the, the problem with that is, is that the capital cost of this is so high that you couldn't really afford to run a business on it. So, if, so while the operation will pay for itself, the revenue that comes in the door from the, the, the concessions and from the entrance fees and from all the things that'll happen in there, more than pay the expenses of the salaries and, and the lighting bills and all those things. But if you had to add in paying back $50 million into that, you couldn't make it work. Like this is not somewhere we're gonna be able to go out and get a private business and say, hey, come on, build this, it's gonna make a ton of money. Because it doesn't make a ton of money. And if you have to pay those capital costs at the start, it, it, becomes, it becomes unfeasible. And so the key to this project is it has to be nonprofit, it has to be built by, and, and we'll probably come to the community and, and ask for you know, people to step up and be private donors and, and maybe have yes. things named after them. That, that's gonna be part of it. But clearly we have to have that money in the front or this project doesn't go. It will not sustain a capital, capital cost. Yeah. Well, and I think that is a whole other area because Joy Leach made her, or you know, or bones, I guess you could say, by selling uh, Simon Fraser uh, downtown campus to the public and going to business people and mm -hmm. high eyes and stat and things like that and just selling it off room by room and yep, yep. getting a lot of capital contributions. We're, but it's more an investment. It, it is an investment. investment. I, we really want to see everybody in Nanaimo make part of that investment. So when we get into that capital campaign, if you think that the environment and the ocean and all of these things are worthwhile, you know, you're going to have to hopefully send your $20 in. I mean, everyone's going to have to be part of this. And the more we can make it a community effort, the more we think this is going to be successful. You know what? I, I, I like how Tim, he says this is kind of a tipping point project. This is time for Nanaimo to get on the world scene have a world-class facility and start acting like a world city. And I think we can do that. I think this is the way to make it happen. And I think you sort of mentioned the action plan already. If people can uh, submit emails, go to your website, leave comments, yeah. do the things like that. The biggest one there in what we're dealing with, because we've made a number of presentations. We've presented to council. We've spoken with our MLAs. We've spoken with the member of parliament and, and the logical part is there. The emotion, everyone says it's wonderful. That's not the question. That's not the issue. But we need the community to speak up. And it is as simple as going into, onto our website, 
support us and we'll start to gather those names. And as we get that information, then the data will start to come out. So we will be displaying your website address, but maybe you could give that again. Sure, it's www.ndda.ca. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. And there's, and there's all the plans are on there. Um, the architect's work is on there and there's a place to support it. And I, I hope fairly soon we'll also be able to put the business plan up itself. So folks mm -hmm. that, you know, like Tim and I, that, you know, we say that's nice, but, you know, show us the, show us the real numbers. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to have yeah. all of those up and anybody can look at it. And, and we're pretty comfortable with all of the work that's been done. So. Yeah. Well, it all adds to a layer of credibility. And, well, and, and that's important for Nanaimo. There's been some projects that have come here in the past. So the citizens are a little bit shy. And, you know, we don't have to walk far down Commercial Street or around the yeah. corner on the waterfront to see them. And that was, that was one of the key criteria with our group right from the get-go, is this has to justify itself for the citizens as well as the taxpayers and so forth. So it'll fit. Yeah. Well, from to coin a phrase, I guess, and this may be a leap of faith, we want people to get wet, but we don't want them to take a bath. <laughs> that's so, very well put. That's, yes. Now, we're going to steal that and use that on our website, may we? <laughs> yeah. well, that's, that's a good idea. So, um, so once again, we're just winding down. And for you, I hope it went reasonably quickly, but uh, it was wasn't fun. like pulling teeth. So I'd like to thank you, Lauren and Tim. It's been very thank interesting. Thank for you, our Brian. viewers, if you've got any ideas for topics on Coast Connections, by all means, submit them to us. We have a, an email address at Shaw. So just send in your suggestions and we'll take that under consideration. And I shouldn't say it like that. It sounds like somebody that, hey, I don't want to listen to that, but that's not what I mean. Anyway, so I've really enjoyed our discussion and thank you very much for coming. I wish you all the success. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Brian, if we may ask, could we come back in a few months? It, when you've You're got a, a big match. check? When, when, <laughs> yeah, when right. we've moved past the stage of now we're actually in the development or the pre-development yeah. stage. Yeah, no, I think that would be good because to show progress and Wonderful. go back Excellent. to where, you know, this is where we started. And now you know why Tim's Then I can say, great. I knew you when. <laughs> My name, you say that now about Lauren. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. thank you. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you, viewers. And this has been Coast Connections.